Today I'm going to show you how to install the woven vinyl from pontoonstuff.com uh, on this 16 foot Playboy pontoon boat. Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. Today I'm going to show you how to install the woven vinyl from pontoonstuff.com uh, on this 16 foot Playboy pontoon boat. We've already got our new deck boards installed. I always recommend replace the deck. Uh, even if you think it's in good shape, it's hard to get something clean that you've peeled carpet off of if there's already old glue on there. Start with new deck boards. Then we'll stretch out our vinyl, roll it out, lay it out. I'm gonna make sure that I have about the same measurement from the deck to the edge of the vinyl in the front and the back on one side. That way I know I'm relatively straight with the woven pattern, if you're off by a little bit, a you know, quarter of an inch, it's not gonna show. With the vinyl teak, the teak plank look, that with stripes, we're gonna need to take a little extra care to line up and make sure that our stripes are all nice and straight. But with this pattern, I'm gonna get as close as I can, front to back, and make sure that I have my length correct too. A little bit of overlap is a good thing. We can always trim that off when we're done. First things first, I'm laid out. Everything's nice and flat on here, it looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp on the front and the back and the center, roughly the center, so I can peel back one side to apply my glue. I like to use a two by four or a one by four with a ratcheting clamp. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back, but before I clamp my back on, I'm gonna grab a PVC pipe and I'm gonna roll from my front clamp all the way to the back that way I can roll out any other bubbles, any other air underneath, I can smooth everything out, then I'll clamp my backboard on, then I'll peel one side up. With my clamps in place, roughly in line about halfway, I'm gonna take my vinyl and peel it back from one side. From here, I have one side of deck exposed, my vinyl rolled back. I'll make sure there's no major splinters, anything big on there um, before I lay my glue down. Just make sure it's nice and clean. We're gonna be using Deckmate's uh, flooring adhesive for vinyl floors. Uh, it's a felt back vinyl, it sticks really well. This stuff is pretty liquidy. A 16 footer, I end up using about a gallon and a half, uh, give or take. So what I'll do is first make sure I'm mixed up. And you'll see here what I've got is a extendable roller. This boat's down on the floor. If your boat's up on a bunk trailer, you might need to be able to extend your paint roller out. Um, but again, a short nap paint roller, just a nine inch roll. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and dump out most of this gallon, about three quarters of it, just evenly throughout the middle of the board here, what's exposed. That way I can work it front to back. I'm gonna work my glue all the way to that vinyl that's rolled up and push into it just a little bit to sneak a little underneath, and I'll work all the way back to the edge. With this glue, it's gonna be active as long as it's still white. If it starts to turn clear, that's okay. You just need to go back over it with some fresh glue. It'll turn white again. That means that you're still gonna to adhere to your vinyl. If it turns clear really fast, you just gotta work a little quicker to make sure that that glue stays active so when we roll our vinyl back on top, it's gonna to stick. So on that first side, I do recommend add a little bit of extra glue because it's gonna take a minute for your paintbrush, your paint roller to really start grabbing on. I'm gonna put a lid on top of that glue can just so it doesn't dry out because I'm gonna be working on this for quite a few minutes here, getting it spread, rolling our vinyl back, and then working it out with a PVC uh, PVC pipe and a cutting board. So I'm gonna put my lid back on, that way it doesn't dry up and go bad. I'm gonna roll it as evenly, uniform as I can, covering the whole surface before I uh, roll my vinyl back into place. As you can see, I've started by spreading it throughout the whole way. Now I'm gonna work into the vinyl at the, at the roll or at the fold. Then I'll work my edge, go over one more time just to freshen everything up. 
and then we'll be ready to roll the vinyl back out. So I've rolled it to the fold of my vinyl. I've worked the edges. I'm gonna go one more pass quickly over just to uniform everything, take out any extra clumps for excess glue and piles. Then I'll roll the vinyl out and we'll show you how to roll it down to adhere to that glue. When I roll back out, I'm gonna work from the middle we have to make sure when you're working by ourselves, if you have an extra set of hands, awesome. But I'm gonna make sure I roll it evenly and slowly so that one of my corners doesn't flip into the glue. If it does, have a cloth or a uh, paper towel close by, you can wipe it off quick. But I just work it slow, get it back down, and then we'll show you the process from there. Vinyl is on, it's rolled down. I'm gonna go over it with my PVC pipe, just putting my body weight down. If you have a floor roller at home, you could do that too, Rivers here to supervise. We're gonna make sure that we roll it out, get any air bubbles out with my PVC pipe. Then I'm gonna go back over it with a cutting board, a smaller surface area that's gonna get more pressure down just to make sure that I get any other uh, air bubbles out. Helps get a nice insured grab of that glue to the vinyl. Now that I've rolled with a PVC pipe to get any big air bubbles out, I'm gonna go over it, just a standard run of the mill, plastic cutting board. I'm gonna lay it flat, put my hand on the front side, and put my body weight down to slide it. I'm gonna work from the center to the outside, taking out any more air bubbles, but also getting a nice, uh, heavier, uh, smaller surface area on that vinyl to help with the glue process. pushing weight down as I slide out, taking the weight off, pulling my cutting board back to come back to the middle. The first half is done. I've removed my clamps. I'm now gonna flip my vinyl back to where I can just start to see the glue that I've already laid down on the first half. That way I can work the other side glue right up into that, maybe even overlap a little bit. That's not gonna hurt. Then I'll repeat the same process of rolling out on the other side. Rolled it back far enough to where we can see the glue where I've already laid on the other side. Now I'm gonna work my glue all the way into that. Got a nice uniform coat of glue on the second side. Gonna repeat the steps of rolling the vinyl back carefully, making sure my corners don't catch the glue. And then we'll roll it out, smooth it out, and I'll show you how to trim the edges. Got our vinyl laid on, flattened out, air bubbles taken out. I'm now gonna trim that excess around all the sides before I can staple it into place. So you'll see I've got this extra overhang. What I'm gonna do is take a box cutter, razor blade. Every new vinyl job I do gets a new blade. Nice and sharp is gonna help. Make sure you're always cutting away from you because these things can get you really quick. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the top side, just running my blade right down the edge of the wood and the vinyl. This vinyl, it cuts well with a sharp razor. It doesn't tear. So you'll find the reason this stuff's so tough is it's very tear resistant. The, the razor will cut it, but once you start a cut, it's not gonna pull with your hand. So we're gonna run the razor gently down the whole length of the board, all the way around all the edges before we staple everything down. I like to expose the front edge of that board first. Then I can find the edge with my razor and just keep a gentle pressure into the wood. Try not to catch any big slivers, um, but I can keep a gentle pressure in, running my blade nice and smooth down the whole length uh, of the deck. I'll keep one hand, my non-cutting hand, out of the way and pulling the vinyl to the side. And then my blade hand is just gonna keep that pressure into the wood slightly. 
We'll repeat that same process all the way around the boat. I'm gonna go around the edges and staple. I have a pneumatic staple gun. They're $35 at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, any of those big box stores. Saves me a ton of time. I'm gonna run around every four to six inches. I'll, I'll use a half inch staple and it's gonna keep everything down, especially when we start to reinstall our rub rails, especially if they're an F channel. Uh, if they're just an L channel or L bracket, uh, that goes on pretty easy, but I like to have that extra security knowing that everything is pinned down around the edges Even if it's just for helping it dry in place t50 half inch staples and This little pneumatic gun uh, I'll be able to run around fairly quickly get this done and let it start drying I should know I'm gonna put these staples about a quarter inch onto the deck. So I don't wanna go so far that I'm ever gonna see them, um, but I don't wanna have them hanging off either. So I'll go in about a quarter inch and run them again every four to six inches spaced out. And there you have it. This 16 foot boat has vinyl floor laid down. Again, we'll give it 24 to 48 hours to dry before we start reinstalling the railings, putting the seats on. But I'll tell you what, when we get a boat to this point, now the fun gets to start. So the teardown's done, the redecking is done. We get a clean slate to start with. You're gonna love this floor on your boat. You'll wanna kick your shoes off every time you step on your boat when you use this vinyl, because it's cushioned, it's soft on the feet. If it gets a little warm, splash a little water on it, takes care of it in a heartbeat. But all in all, in my opinion, the best option for any boat is to go with that woven vinyl. Pontoonstuff.com makes a great product. It's gonna last. You're gonna love it.